Omar is a man in mourning. His stepson Mohamed Bouazizi set fire to himself in mid-December. He climbed up on his fruit stand and he poured petrol on himself. He climbed up there. They say the 26-year-old fruit and vegetable seller had been pushed to the brink by police harassment. Mohamed's fruit stand now sits in this garage in Zizi Bouzid in central Tunisia and still bears the traces of his dramatic act of defiance. It set off riots across the country, which brought down an autocratic regime which had ruled for 23 years. Other market traders, many unlicensed like Wazizi, identify with the city's new hero. He was a victim, a victim of these people who had a lot of money, who were doing deals. It's always the poorest who pay the highest price. Zizi Bouzid is a poor rural city, far from the tourist resorts on the coast. At the Bouazizi family home, the walls pay homage to the young man, and the house is full of well-wishers. His mother keeps his bedroom as the day he died. That's where he slept. That's his shirt. May my son go to paradise. Before her son died, the now ex-president Zine Al-Badin Ben Ali visited him in hospital. I said, Mr. President, I want my son. I don't want anything else. Nothing can replace him. He was the center of my home. Even amidst the grief and anger, the Bouazizis are proud. For them, he made the ultimate sacrifice in order to protest against years of abuse at the hands of a corrupt regime. Around 20 kilometers away, in the middle of a field, is a cemetery where Mohammed is laid to rest. His brother Salem is convinced it was his brother's courage that brought about an end to Ben Ali's rule. I feel like he's liberated the whole of Tunisia and all the Tunisian people. I hope he'll liberate the whole Arab world. Several people in other Arab countries have since copied Mohammed, issuing a challenge to unpopular governments across the region.